Sammy, you're here. Mike. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you in the, in the country I live in. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> rare now, I'm these gonna days. have to go see you. You get your butt over there. You ever come to Germany? Uh, I, we did with Emmy Lou once. Uh, actually, you know, but not, si not since the early 90s. And, and I would mm -hmm. welcome, I would welcome it. I would love for my band to play in Germany and Europe and oh, Australia and be. back. Yeah. We just haven't been out of the country much. I just went to the European World of Bluegrass Convention called EWOB. <laughs> wow. Okay. That European World of Bluegrass. <laughs> EWOB. In Holland. I, I, I didn't want, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave the country during uh, the, the uh, George W. Bush administration yeah, because I really didn't want to travel the world with my last yeah. name. Oh, wasn't a popular thing. Wow. Well, you're right. Just something to be aware of. <laughs> Here we are. I, 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 I liked I could, when you had Bush for president picks, didn't you? <laughs> well, we had that. Yeah. We had t-shirts. We had t-shirts. <laughs> well, I, people ask if we were going we to do that this time, and it's, it's just there's there's no, there's no fun. There's no nothing funny going on in I this elect yeah, election we, thing. We should, we should probably leave politics out of this. Yeah, huh, I'll, stay with, I'll stay with I'll stay with Manlins. Yeah. Well, this, that's what I'm this is. We're, we're um, talking to all these mandolin students of mine, and it's been quite a ride for me to be able to connect with so many people, you know, the mm -hmm. way we do these video exchanges. You really kind of meet the person and, and they see how they play, and then you try and help them. But uh, the one person that helped me the most is Sam Bush, and he's sitting right here. So I'm, I just want to put that out there. Uh, thank you for giving me all the inspiration you have given me from a 13 year old punk in florida to i just happen to be a little older than you well, now do you you saw the show I'm where really the new grass revival came to lakeland florida and my these three fingers there. got smashed in a car door on the way <laughs> That's right. oh, and uh oh. and there was no such thing as not playing or i don't know we're gonna play the only way I could play was to put a thumb pick um, back to here and hold it on the third finger. And, at the George Jones and you and talk Tammy about a, a bad sound, and there is sitting in the audience one of the greatest mandolin players to be you'd ever meet, sitting there thinking, that's how he does that? <laughs> I, was, I was totally unaware of Newgrass Revival, even though they were there. You yeah, know, right. We were, you were in my face, and the top of my head came that, off, but and that was my fun. life changed forever. George, Jones, moment, George Jones uh, Country Music Park, wasn't it? George yeah. Jones and Tammy yeah. Wynette had a place in Lakeland. They had one bluegrass festival there. Carlton Haney put it on? Yes. Yeah, because we still work for Carlton Haney. And it was the Osborne brothers were there in the second generation. And uh, the yeah, Lu Lewis family. Deal. And no yeah. audience. I mean, no audience. No, no audience. No audience. <laughs> just, just Curtis Birch's relatives. Well, that's pretty much it. But, uh, well, you've done it, man. You've taken the entire history of American mandolin and somehow distilled that whole thing down, learned everything from all the cats that came before you, and yet pushed it as far forward as anybody has. It's like you're reaching back in time with one hand while reaching forward with the other. I, uh, I read, uh, early when I was just still in high school, I read a statement from Howard Roberts, jazz guitar player, that said, if you only copy one person, it's plagiarism. Hmm. If you copy everybody, it's research. <laughs> so, so I, and, and somebody also said to me early that, you know, pay attention to other pickers because, you know, that, that, that mandolin picker over there, he might only know four notes, but maybe there's something great about those four you need to learn. Oh. And, and he might sound better playing his four than you sound playing your thousand. Now, why oh. is that? So there's, but there's something to be learned from anybody you see. And I, th I think you can That's learn beautiful. something if you really pay attention. So in the case of when I was a kid, yeah, I mean, I was, I, you know, if we, when I listened to Country Gentleman, I, I tried to learn the John Duffy breaks note for note. Did Dean, you Dean slow Wells. the records down? I didn't have to slow the records down, but Just they were pretty close. It. And it, with the Dillards, Dean Webb, I, you know, we're going to play Dooley tonight, and oh I'm going to, and I'm going to take the exact Dean Webb solo. It's the only one that sounds right to oh me. God. It only sounds Dean right, you know. You're right. And uh, but Dean Webb and and uh, the Osborne Brothers had this great instrumental record on MGM, Osborne Brothers Instrumentals, and Bobby was the, one of the first mandolin players I heard play fiddle tune style melodies. You know, not like Bill okay. Monroe, because Bill Monroe never. 
And of course, I was learning Bill Monroe stuff. And but, you played the fiddle as a kid. Well, I was learning, and then I started playing fiddle at age 13. So that, I'm sure, influenced my mandolin pick. And because I, by the time I was 16 or 17, I was playing the mandolin that way too in Texas, you would Texas say Bobby fiddle style was things. The first guy. Bobby's really? the first guy I heard play actually, like, like a fiddle like would play we melody. playing all the notes. Mm -hmm. As opposed and the to way the, Bobby the played skeleton Bill. of the two. Yeah, the way he played Billy and Little Ground on that record was just a great way that, uh, and once again, I, and when you used to hear in Monroe, the way, you know, the way a pick can stay on. Whereas Bobby be going. So a different note every time. So I was more turned on to the the fiddle style notes on the mandolin, and I was copying the guy who played mandolin on the Tommy Jackson fiddle records that I later found out was Hank Garland. The jazz guitarist, and he was, and Tommy wanted a mandolin. Did Red you Rector, like a mandolin? yes, yes, no. according to uh, that, he just played. I don't know if he had one, but he was such a great musician that uh, I talked to Ray Eddington, who was the rhythm guitar player on those records. I was just old enough to get to play some sessions with Ray when I first moved to Nashville, and um, Ray said, "Yeah, that Hank was such a great musician that Tommy would just teach him the tunes right before they'd cut them." Oh. And that's why there's a lot of <laughs> fiddle and mandolin unison. Tommy liked that. And if there was ever harmony, it would be Tommy on the fiddle doing it. So, so I was listening. So I was influenced by somebody that didn't play like a mandolin player, playing these exact fiddle melodies. And then, then later to the Alan Mundy and I, you know, I started trying to make, you know, get where I could play any Texas fiddle tune on the mandolin. Which I was actually better at than on the fiddle, of course, because you know I'm confident in my fiddling, but I could never play the same way that the Texans did, and didn't really? didn't really want to. I mean, it was because I, I was interested in bluegrass also, and and uh, so in rock and roll fiddle, loved rock and roll fiddle. I always loved love rock well, and roll fiddle. Well, this goes to the place of you got all these roots. You grew up in the, with the music, right? I mean, you grew up in Kentucky, yeah. so you. You know the real thing. Well, I mean, and the advantage of the part of Kentucky I was in was that we had Nashville television, television reception. So, you know, I'd, I would, well, I, would, I did get to see Bill Monroe oh. what, the first time he made that G chord. That's how you do it. Oh. Or I did get to see the Osborne brothers and Jim and Jesse on TV and Ronnie Reno. I saw him on TV, on TV. playing with Don Reno. Because there weren't and really festivals when you were a There teenager. were no festivals. I went to the first festival in 1965 at Roanoke. 65 and 66, I got to go to both of them. So I was 13 years old in 65, sitting there with the man, watching Jesse and and Bobby Osborne and Monroe and a young guy who I met at that festival named David Grisman. And <laughs> who so, was probably 18 or something. He was, well, I think he's seven, seven above me, so he was maybe 20. Okay. And that was the first F5 I ever played because Dog walked by. Okay. And I'm playing the, my A50 jamming with somebody, and all of a sudden this mandolin that I later learned was one of the best ones I'd ever see, you know, came down in front of me. He handed it to you. And his voice goes, hey, man, play a good one, man. Oh, and boy, I put that thing in my hands, on. and you're like, oh, I didn't know this existed. Wow. What I was you playing, playing before that? Well, I have my first A50 You're in 1962, A50, 62, late 62, I think. And um, no, take it back. Sixty-three, sixty-three. But yeah, and and that was the first one. I wish I could have still had it, but you, you know, get, you guys became buddies. Traded up, right away. Met him right then. Uh, we weren't immediate buddies, but I was watching him. You know, from the audience, going, "Well, this this Grisman guy." You oh, know, he was he, playing he, his band. He uh, they played a little bit, and then the second year, Del McCurry came, and I. You know, the way Carlton Haney talked, I thought his name was Delma. Del uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Delma Curry. So I thought it was, his name was Delma Curry. And I thought, man, that Delma guy, I like him. And um, so, uh, and he, they played a set on that Friday night. They didn't, I don't know if they didn't have one, didn't have him with them, whatever, but Grisman played the mandolin with Dell on, oh. the, on the Friday night set oh. in 1966. And that was one of the greatest things I ever oh. heard. Chris Warner on the banjo, oh Billy Baker on the fiddle. And whoo, oh, yeah, God, Dell was just on fire. But I, Dog was just really great. He, nice. he, did, he did a break on Dark Hollow that to this day I remember exactly how I did. He was splitting strings and the whole thing. It was Come just, Doggy was oh, a, hot, a hot, a hot, he was hot dog. He, that was before he was dog. Yeah, <laughs>